Welcome to our channel. Today, we talk about Neuralink's test on its first human patient, and if this test was actually a success. So to start of this story, let's introduce the test patient. The world held its breath as Neuralink, the brain-computer interface company led by Elon Musk, introduced Nolan Arba as their very first human implant recipient. For months, speculation swirled around the identity of this individual. Now, we finally get to hear Nolan's story firsthand. Nolan, a 29-year-old man, has battled the challenges of quadriplegia for the past eight years. A diving accident left him with a dislocated C4 and C5 vertebrae, which are located in the midsection of the cervical spine. That is the uppermost portion of your spine, consisting of seven vertebrae C1 to C7 that support your head and allow for neck movement. Imagine your collarbone or clavicle and the base of your skull. The C4 and C5 vertebrae are roughly halfway between these two landmarks. These vertebrae play a crucial role in several functions. They help support the weight of your head and allow for a wide range of neck movements. And they house and protect the upper part of the spinal cord, which carries nerve signals between the brain and the rest of the body. As mentioned at the start of this video about Nolan Arba, injuries to these vertebrae can be severe. Damage to C4 and C5 can lead to quadriplegia, which is the loss of sensation and control in all four limbs. Daily activities like dressing and eating can become significant challenges, requiring assistance in some cases. This is because the spinal cord is compromised, interrupting the flow of nerve signals between the brain and the body. Essentially, severing the connection between his brain and his body from the shoulders down. This has robbed Nolan of all sensation and control in his limbs. However, Nolan is remarkably positive in the face of this adversity. Now we aren't too sure why Nolan was the selected candidate, but Neuralink's first in human trial, called the PRIME study, focuses on individuals with severe paralysis. Nolan's quadriplegic condition, due to a spinal cord injury, likely made him a suitable candidate based on the study's criteria. So now let's go into how Neuralink established a connection into Nolan's brain. For starters, the Neuralink seamlessly connects the human brain to a computer, allowing for a two-way exchange of information by employing implants to link human brains to computers, enabling people who are blind or disabled to manage computers or cell phones. The implant would gather electrical impulses that the brain sends out and interpret them as actions, just like current brain-machine interfaces. That, in essence, is the ambitious goal of Neuralink in Nolan's brain. The technology itself involves the surgical implantation of tiny flexible threads into specific regions of Nolan's brain. These threads contain an array of electrodes that record and decode neural activity, translating the electrical signals generated by his neurons into digital information. This information can then be transmitted to a computer, enabling various potential applications, and now thanks to Neuralink, it isn't stopping him from playing video games either. So currently, the Neuralink is implanted underneath Nolan's scalp and sitting flush with the bone of his skull. Underneath that chip are 64 tiny wires which are the key elements for interfacing with the brain. These ultra-thin wires, only about 2 millimeters deep, are implanted into the surface of Nolan's brain, specifically targeting the motor cortex region. This implant's aim was to allow Nolan think about specific movements, and the Neuralink implant will translate those intentions into digital signals that can be used to operate external devices. This could potentially allow him to regain some degree of control and independence in his daily life. And thankfully, the implant was a success, with no issues along the way. The next step was demonstrating the capabilities of this implant. We see Nolan playing a virtual chess game, and it looks just like anyone else using a computer mouse. His movements are fast, smooth, and seemingly effortless as he navigates the screen and controls the cursor. This is a dramatic change from Nolan's pre-implant days, where he relied on a mouth stick to operate his laptop. Now, with the Neuralink implant, a Bluetooth signal relays his thoughts directly from a chip in his skull to the device, eliminating the need for any external controls. But before Nolan was able to get to this point, he and the Neuralink team went through a stream rigorous testing. The engineering team started off testing the Neuralink on monkeys. Of course, there's a language barrier between the monkeys and the scientists, as the monkey cannot exactly give their thoughts on this technology. For nearly a decade, 
The engineers had been developing the technology based on theories and simulations. Now, with Nolan's first-hand feedback, they were getting a real-world perspective on how a human brain interacts with the implant. It was a massive leap forward compared to studying monkeys. Two approaches emerged as Nolan and the engineers explored how to interact with the Neuralink. The first method was attempted movement. This aimed to leverage existing habits. Nolan would focus on the feeling of moving his hand as if using a traditional mouse, even though physical control was limited. This approach hoped to reactivate dormant neural pathways associated with movement and use them to control the device. The second, however, a more intuitive approach, imagined movement. This proved more successful for Nolan. Here he simply visualized the cursor moving on the screen, almost like using telekinesis. By focusing on the desired location, the cursor would follow his thought, translating his brain's intentions into action. Not only was Nolan moving cursors with his mind, he could play chess and converse at the same time. Nolan's ability to play chess and converse simultaneously while using the Neuralink implant is a powerful testament to its potential. This effortless multitasking hints at a future where users can seamlessly integrate brain-computer interfaces into their daily lives. Imagine controlling a prosthetic limb while simultaneously holding a conversation or manipulating complex objects while receiving real-time information overlays. The possibilities for enhanced productivity and human-machine interaction are vast. Nolan's story highlights the profound effect this technology can have on individuals with paralysis. He was so happy being able to stay up all night playing video games again. This shows the freedom and independence Neuralink can restore. Previously limited to using devices while seated due to pressure concerns, Nolan now has a level of control over his environment he hasn't experienced in years. So was this Neuralink test a success? Well, with what we've seen from Nolan Arba, the Neuralink test was a huge success. After years of testing on animals, they were finally able to test on a human patient, and it proved to be more effective than they had hoped. While Neuralink's human trials are still in their early stages, the case of Nolan Arba offers a glimpse into a potentially revolutionary future for individuals with paralysis. Based on Nolan's experience, there's strong evidence to suggest Neuralink is on the right track to unlocking a brighter future for individuals with paralysis and potentially revolutionize human-computer interaction for everyone. This technology has the potential to revolutionize human-computer interaction for everyone, not just those with paralysis. With this breakthrough, we can be sure that Neuralink will not rest until this technology has been perfected. That's all we have for now. Let us know what you think about this Neuralink test. Do you see it as a success? Like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.